Hello and welcome to day two of 31 Days of Essential Oils. My name is Tammy. I just knocked the wind out of myself. <laughs> I am your I'm your host and your guide, your mentor along this journey. I'm really excited to be delivering these um, videos every day regarding essential oils because it is my mission to serve you and to make sure and to spread the word about essential oils, but not from the context of what books and websites are talking about, but from my perspective. I have over 30 years of background between pharmacology and aromatherapy um, and the study of drug development through the use of plant constituents. So this comes to you through um, my use of them with clients as well as myself, the modifications that I've made, and specifically, basically my my own experience, um, how I see them working and how I understand them to actually be working as science has been discovering. So in this case today, we're talking about ginger root. Now yesterday when I was talking about Palmer Rose, I talked a lot about acetylcholine. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about that simply because ginger root has a role in acetylcholine as well. Um, but not to the degree of Palma Rosa. Now, with, when it comes to ginger root, um, besides we recognize it for its nausea. One of the things about ginger root, though, is it actually helps to regulate the balance of, and, um, and I'll say more about that in just a moment, <clears throat> but it actually helps to maintain, to regulate <clears throat> serotonin and acetylcholine levels in the bowels. Um, it don't necessarily mean balance simply because the body's always in balance. Um, take for instance, like a, a, a migraine and I tip and I often use ginger root with people who have a tendency to have migraines because of that regulation, the requirement for that regulation, because the second serotonin spikes, um, the, the rest of the system is going to go, um, it's going to be changed because the body will make uh, will have to make the the uh, will have to accommodate the higher levels of serotonin, but that's what a, that is actually what um, is typically linked to migraines. Um, but that said, when you combine it, when you actually use the ginger root, it actually helps to regulate these neurochemicals in the bowels, and it prevents. I've actually seen it prevent between actually using ginger root in a blend and drinking fresh ginger root tea. I've seen people actually prevent migraines. They've never had another migraine. And we're talking a good amount of time. I'm not just talking about, you know, in a, in a couple of weeks. I'm talking about years, never having another migraine. Does it mean that you can stop? You should ever come on? That's the one question that always intrigues me. It's like, well, how long am I going to have to do this? And my answer, not to be snotty or, or to be a smart ass, but the fact is, is that as long as you're alive, it would be behoove you to actually do things that are going to help protect you from this environment. Because the fact is, is like I said, the body is constantly in balance. Although we may not like it, we will interpret it, um, the discomfort that we feel as being out of balance. It's not out of balance. It's unstable. That's the reason why we have discomfort and disorder and disease. But it's not out of balance. <clears throat> It's simply reacting to the environment, whether it be internal, meaning there's different shifts that are occurring, whether it be your sleep cycle or your menstrual cycle or what have you. There's constantly shifts going on internally, but there's also the external information coming in. And so the body is in constant state of flux. Nothing static about the body at all. So how long do you have, if you're, if you're prone to migraines, how long do you need to keep using at least drinking ginger tea and, and intermittently using ginger root essential oil for as long as you don't want a migraine. See, that's it. I mean, if somebody were to go to a doctor and the doctor would put you on a medication, you don't, I mean, you might ask, but you don't question for, you know, you, you, you'll just go along with it. But for some reason, we seem to think that I'd like to think we could heal. I would love to see everybody just we just need essential oils because we have a cut. We just need an essential oil because we have a cold. And that would be the extent of it. But the fact is, is that we have, an, we're being, um, our bodies are consistently being threatened. This is the reason why I was talking about this yesterday. It's, it's, under, it's in a constant state of um, high alert because with the chemistry, the chemicals that we're exposed to, whether it be the heavy metals or the additives in our food or what's in the air, uh, what's in the water, because there's chemicals everywhere, right? 
things that we use to clean the house, things that people use to spray their yards. They're, they're everywhere. And with this, I mean, let me just say this, if you've not seen any of my other videos, there's 45 million man-made chemicals currently being used around the world. Over 70,000 of them have been confirmed endocrine disruptors. So that information alone says, if we include essential oils into our day, and I, and I say this because they are signaling molecules, just like these other chemicals, just like our hormones, but the body reacts differently to a natural chemical. It will actually respond to it first. Nobody can explain why, they just have identified this. And so that is our prevention. That is our mode of survival or, or even being able to thrive at that point. When we start to include oils on a regular basis, not just as needed, but on a re regular basis, two, three times a day, just, you know, use your oils. You are actually making a difference in your system and preventing illness. Like I said, I would love to see a cure for everything. But the fact is, is with, with the threat that our body is consistently under, I don't see that's going to happen as long as we have all these chemicals. So use the oils, do things that will help keep your body on top of it, not victimized by it, if that makes any sense. Well, that was, I, I didn't mean to go off on my little bandwagon there, but I just wanted to say that because ginger root is exceptional. I mean, I guess I came up with it when I was thinking about the migraine. That is one of the biggest reasons I've used it in somebody's a digestive blend for someone. <clears throat> Other benefits that I've used it for, um, it is a great anti-inflammatory. It, it Because of its warming qualities, it's exceptional in like um, muscle pain, for muscle pain, like muscle pain salves. Um, I love to use it for that because again, because it is warming. And it helps with the circulation. Um, it's very good for the heart. Um, I've already mentioned the digestive system. <clears throat> it supports the immune system in a way that um, ideally what it's doing is it's actually working with um, the borneol in it um, has a direct influence on the nitric oxide synthase genetic complex. And so I often use it with people who have cholesterol issues who are, may not be taking um, a cholesterol medication. If they're taking a cholesterol medication, you can't use it. You don't want to do, you don't duplicate your mechanism of action. But if, if, you're, um, if hormonal, here's the deal. If, if hormonal dis, um, instability is a concern, which it really should be, then ginger root might be something you might want to have on the shelf for, you know, kind of changing it up a little bit. As I mentioned, it helps with the use of cholesterol. It helps with um, stabilizing, supporting the immune system. But the biggest component here, like I said, is the borneol supports the nitric oxide synthase. And why is that important? Because nitric oxide synthase is responsible or it, in, it influences mental health. It influences cardiovascular health. It influences respiratory health. It influences digestive health. And it influences immune health. And um, the borneol and the ginger root will and does help with that. It also helps the body to, um, helps with lipid metabolism at the cellular level. That's another reason why it's very beneficial in that arena. So that would be my suggestion for ginger root. Um, and here's another deal. If you have, <laughs> we talk about cellulite, we talk about maybe fat buildup. Okay, I'm not talking about this being a, a, a fat burning, you know, melting kind of, I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about get skinny fast or if you, you know, are on the slight side, but you have a tendency, you have more fat tissue on your body. That doesn't necessarily mean that this is going to melt that away. You don't want that to melt away. You actually need the tissue. It's, it's appropriating. It's actually following along with this and learning about what other oils will actually help you build protein, use protein better. This one actually helps you use fat better. It's not going to melt it off your body because that's not what we want it to do. We're trying to stabilize the hormonal system. The hormonal system will do that for you. The endocrine system, adipose tissue specifically, is the largest gland of the endocrine system. So stabilizing this system is where the body will begin to just naturally eliminate excess fat. Why? Because for one thing, we have fat on our body for insulation 
and it tends to build in the wintertime when, it, when, when, when we live in colder climates, and then it goes away. It's the hormonal system is adjusting accordingly to the stress, like we were talking about, different internal and external factors. That said, um, another reason we have fat tissue is uh, significantly because of hormonal um, instability, because it, they, it is regulated by the hormones. But the other side, but that instability isn't because your body's defective. That instability is due to the fact that you're exposed to toxins and you are predisposed to building fat. Many people are these days because it's a, it's a part of the hormonal system. Fat tissue stores toxins. So we don't want to melt that fat off fast. We want to help the endocrine system stabilize itself so that the body will naturally eliminate the fat, eliminate the toxins safely. So the inclusion of ginger root makes a difference in that. And especially when you combine it with other oils, that will help with protein assimilation. So on that note, like I said, those are the reasons why I like to use it. I've used it for inflammation. Um, you know, it could be acute inflammation. I've used it for people who, who do have things like arthritis and other pain, you know, um, joint pain. Um, it's really good for that because of the, again, because of the inflammation. But I use it primarily for digestion. And it has everything to do with the use of cholesterol, which supports the, um, hormonal, because that's part of our hormonal regulation. It also supports acetylcholine. And it really helps to stabilize those who are living with migraines, who have been experiencing migraines. So on that note, I'm going to complete here. And thank you for being a part of this with me. Check out Synergistance.com, 31 Days of Essential Oils to see what else came through when I started writing about it. Okay, you guys take care.